Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and today I have a really great haul. So I went to the auction in yesterday's video, and I found a lot of interesting things, and I did pay up. So my total bill for the entire auction haul was $241, one of my largest purchases in a long time. So yes, I did get a lot of things, and I did pay up, like I said, for some of these just because I wanted some really interesting pieces. Now I am gonna make money regardless, uh, but like let's give an example here. I spent say $30 in anticipation of making 50 or 60. So that's the kind of margins I'm looking at on some of these items, but I did find some things that I'm gonna make good profits on. Uh, let's start off here with this little tiny thing. It's just cute and I don't know, I think I got it part of a knock part of a grouping, but it's a Hummel box. It's a music box. And it has the little people on the front there with their umbrella. And yeah, it's a box, you open it, and it plays a tune. It is marked on the bottom here, Toy, Toyo, Toyo, T-O-Y-O, Japan. Uh, so that's awesome, really cool. It does have some minor water damage to the front, probably from all that rain, but it's really cool. So I'll probably sell this for about $12. I did get two interesting planters here. Uh, this one is really awesome. It's green pottery, green glaze. Uh, it's a bird, you can see there. It's not marked on the bottom who it is, but it resembles McCoy or Shawnee. Really awesome though, like it a lot. So there's that one. And then the other planter is really neat. I'll show you that and I'll, then I'll show you who it's made by. It has all these large leaves on it and it's, a, it's in a blue color. So the maker of this is, best as I can pronounce it, Niloak, N-I-L-O-A-K, I believe is what it says. And I'll show you that. I have never heard of that before. So I did look them up and something like this sells for about 12 or $15, but yeah, there are some really desirable versions from this company. Uh, n not anything like this, but they do have some pretty desirable, like expensive things out there. But yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So I believe I paid, it was like $5 or something for the pair of these. And I think something else was even included. So I think that's a pretty good um, pickup right there. Okay, right here, it's kind of just out of frame. I got this really cool old medicine cabinet. It's made of metal, of course, 1940s style. Well, it's from the 40s. And it's uh, kind of creamy beige right now, but once upon a time it was white, bright white. And it is just really cool. So it has these red knobs, they're wood, and then some transferred on decals. So these are just applied to the metal and uh, they are discolored, of course, like everything with age. And uh, you can see kind of where they start and stop on the material itself. But it's really awesome, and I had to grab this. So I bought this for the 1950s booth that I have. I think it'll look pretty good in there. So it's kind of hard to see, but right here there is this, ooh, there it is, a, like a little hanging arm. So you can hang some towels on there. I thought it was really cool. I'll open it up so you can see there is one shelf and there is rust present, you know? So it's not in perfect shape by any means, but the, in, the uh, inside is a little bit brighter white at least. <laughs> so really neat. I paid $12.50 for this. Whether or not that's a great price, it's all right because I think it's an interesting looking piece. But yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad price, $12.50 but I wish it was like a little bit less, like eight bucks would be nice. Um, oh, I did get some other little granite ware pieces, enamel ware. I paid $2 for this little grouping here. So we have a little mug, handled mug. Very cool. And then this one's nice. I think that's a blue, is that blue? Yeah, it's a blue rim on there blue edge blue edging this one's heavier this one's heavier than the uh than this one and then we have this gray this marbled gray really cool 
It does have some words on here, but I don't know if I can, oh, for household use only is what it says in very large print. Uh, it's a measuring cup, one quart, half pint, one pint and half pint. Very, very neat. So I paid $2 for all three of those. I'm going to probably put them in the booth for like five to $8 a piece. And I think they would sell fairly easily for that. I mean, they're pretty neat, great little decor pieces for your kitchen or farmhouse inspired decor. So lovely. I did get two of these glass reamers. Uh, they were kind of incidentals. They came with something else that I bought, but uh, I, I do stock these in my booth. I put like four, five, six dollars on them depending on how intricate they are. This one here has some fun 1940s influences to me. Um, there's like these little lines going up the sides. I like that a lot. And then even the, the handle there you can see. So yeah, I like this one quite a bit. And then we have more of a planer one, a planer re uh, reamer. Kind of basic. So this one maybe $4, this one maybe $6 in the booth, and they should sell for that. I did get, let's see, where do I want to go? I did get a few of these handmade 1970s type ceramic pieces. I'll go through them fairly quickly, but we have here this bird. Thought that was cute. I bought all of these in a basket. There was a basket of these guys. And um, I featured it in the video actually from the auction itself. This one I really like a lot. I think it's super cute. It's a little baby bird with his mouth open, ready for the worm. <laughs> And it is marked on the bottom here. It says uh, Dina from Verna, 1972. So that's pretty cool. And then this one, I believe it's for an egg, like a hard boiled egg, but it's kind of, that's, that's all there is to it. And then it's that thin and it looks like you can hang it on the wall too. So yeah, kind of interesting. Not really sure what's, what to make of that. Then we have a spoon rest. I believe that's what that is. And it's these, oh, eggplants or I'm not really sure what those are. I Maybe, but they are uh, pretty cool. And this will probably also go in the 50s booth. Oh, what does it say? 1975. Does that say Duncan? Maybe Duncan Molds? So yeah, and then it is initialed FH on the, the bottom there. Um, oh, and then the duck. We have a wall mounted duck by, uh, I thought this was initialed. No, this one wasn't. There was one that was cracked. I had to toss that one, but this one just has some crazing throughout. I don't know if that will pick up, but otherwise I think it's kind of cute. I might put this one in the 50s booth too. Um, I need to maybe not call it the 50s booth because it's not literally everything in there's 50s, but it is true. The look of the booth is the 50s, but the stuff in it is not just from the 50s. But this is kishy and cute, so it might go in the booth. I think it's kind of fun. Um, I did get this really awesome porcelain light fixture. Now this would be more in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Whoops. It's a three light fixture. So it houses three light bulbs. Really beautiful. I love this creamy porcelain color. And we have these painted, hand painted flowers. And then this cross hatching basket weave type effect. So this will hang on your ceiling. It's a semi flush mount or, or, um, or flush, however you want to identify that. It does come with these porcelain uh, things that kind of show on the side. I took out the old wiring because you can, you really need to update the wiring. So I am thinking about going and getting replacement wiring that already has, that already has the wire leads running off of it so that all you have to do is just stick it up on the ceiling. Um, in addition to this part here, it also has the, the brace. So that will go in there. This is the part that attaches to the ceiling. And then we have this little finial that locks it all together. So I paid $15 for this. 
I believe it came with something else, but I don't, I don't think I have it on this table for this haul. It might be next in the next haul video. Um, but these sell for about eh, 80 to a hundred dollars. So I was happy to find one of these really awesome. Let's see, where do I want to go? All right, I'm going to show you some boxes now. How are we doing on time? Okay, so these are cheese boxes. This one here is part of a craft cheese box. Nothing too exciting about this one, but it came part of the purchase. So even if I put like $3 on this in the booth, I think I'll be able to sell it. Then here's the deal. I paid $17.50 for three cheese boxes. Well, and that little th tiny thing, $17.50. But these boxes are of the larger size and the graphics on them are a little bit more unique than what I'm used to seeing. So this one is, well, this one isn't my favorite, but it's still kind of cool. It says May Rose Pasteurized Processed Cheese St. Louis Independent Packaging Co. That's pretty fun. And it says yellow on that side. This one is fun. It is, oh, sunlight pasteurized processed cheese made in Wisconsin. Coud Coudes, I think that's what it says. And there's graphics on each of the ends. Really neat. And this one, probably my favorite just because of the the graphics. Let me turn it to the side. It's Blue Moon Pasteurized Processed Cheese. The graphics are super fun. I like that one quite a bit. So like I did, like I said, I paid $17.50, which is kind of high for cheese boxes. Over here, they don't, they come in waves, like everything, you know, uh, but I do have already some cheese boxes in my booth that have been setting and setting. Uh, but every now and again, one will trinkle out. Uh, but I just wanted some interesting boxes for a change. So I think I'm going to charge, oh, maybe like 15 or so dollars for each one of those. Could be that I put almost 20 on this one just to see what happens. Now, these are really cool boxes, and I'm not entirely sure if that's going to really pan out and work for me, but I'd like to at least give it a shot and uh, we'll see what happens. But I did pay up for them, so hopefully I can get some of that money back. Now I wanna show you one more cool box that I did pay up for. Uh, just, it was an impulse buy, didn't plan to do it. But I paid $20 for this one box right here. And the graphics on this side over here is much better than the others, but it says Jello. So that's really the only reason why I grabbed it, because it's Jello. And I figure that it's pretty collectible. So I did pay $20 for it, more than I wanted to spend. And it's not in perfect shape being an old box that was used. There's like a crack along here. Um, you can't hardly, I mean, it's there. Well, okay, so this will sell online for at least $40. I have seen solds of this but I also have seen a sold nearing $60. So I would think that I'd like to sell this for between 50 and $60 online, and I shouldn't have too much trouble with it. Uh, so I'm kind of happy that I paid up for it and I just took the plunge and bought it because I might have been kicking myself if I didn't. And honestly, I should still be able to make a good profit on it. So um, that's, that's there's that. So let me go ahead and show you Three more things, just, just for fun. Okay, this is a cool, beautiful stretch glass. It's iridescent as well. You can see that iridescent glow right on the glass. Um, really cool. It's made by Imperial, and it's done in this mark that I don't see, like, hardly ever. So what it, the mark is like this. It's, and I might be able to get a close-up, but it is literally I am... And then it's, it's like in a four piece grid system, right? I am, then P E, then R I, then A L. And then there's like a kind of crosshair through it all. So thought that was interesting. I would say that this is probably older, right? Like among maybe some of the earliest of Imperial. And this is purely going off of just what I'm thinking because of the style of glass this is and that logo not seeing it very much. I don't really ever, I've, 
I don't know if I've ever seen this logo in person, to be honest. So I think it's a really cool bowl. By the way, I paid $3 and not only did I get this bowl, I got a couple other things, but again, they're not on the table. Uh, but this was kind of one of the main reasons I was after that. The other two things I wanted to show you, and then we're gonna wrap this video up, is just some chalkware. Now these were actually also in that basket of that home ceramic stuff that I showed you earlier. This one here is of strawberries mounted on what looks like wood. And then this is chalk. So from the back, you can see that it's, um, yeah, just chalkware. And then this one here is even cuter in my opinion. And it is of a fruit cluster. There we are, uh, apple, pear, and cherries. Really awesome. And these are both in great shape, really, without any, uh, sometimes you'll find gouges in here or missing paint that's been wiped off. Of course, there's minor chips on the high points. That's to be expected, but all in all, great. So these are booth items. I have tried selling chalkware online. It really does not sell very well for me, but in the booth, it does, especially that 50s theme booth. So these will go on the wall in there and I think they'll do pretty well. I would expect to sell this one here for around eight to $10. And this one here for maybe just shy of that um, could be six to eight on the strawberry. But uh, yeah, so that's a good first half. I do hope that I covered enough in this video so I don't have an extra long video next time around, but I am gonna go ahead and wrap this one up Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.